Complex materials is a sort of broad description of an area that Michigan State University has been focusing on for the last several years, and it involves interdisciplinary efforts including inorganic chemistry, organic chemistry, as well as physical chemistry. And what we're trying to do is look at materials both from a fundamental perspective as well as potential applications in a variety of contexts. As a large researcher and in university, Michigan State has many facilities that, that can bear on the, on the problems of complex materials. These include the National Superconducting Cyclotron Laboratory and the many facilities associated with the core CM. The goals of the Center of Research Excellence in Complex Materials are to strengthen materials research on the MSU campus through promoting interdisciplinary research. The purpose of the center is, is to bring teams together that would not normally work together by running workshops, seminars, and providing facilities that are shared between different departments. The research foci of the center are energy materials, um, nano uh, materials for medicine and nanotoxicology, and uh, materials for extreme conditions. In the ultra-fast electron diffraction area, the interest is in trying to image molecular processes at the femtosecond time scale. The objective of ultra-fast electron imaging and ultra-fast electron diffraction laboratory is to capture the ultra-fast moment of a nanoscale object transformed in a real-time, real space. From that, we can understand how the material transforms in a very short time scale. Interdisciplinary research is a very important part of our activity. For example, uh, when we look at how a nano-electronic device works in real time, we need to have engineers who design very high-quality crystal, where we can take an image of how this uh, nano device works in real time, and, and that feedback to the engineer who can then make a better design. So this is a teamwork, which involves both the material scientists, chemists, and physicists to work together. There's a new initiative in extreme materials that are materials under conditions which cause a lot of stress or radiation or high temperature or pressure. And uh, that's related to the new facility on the MSU campus called the Facility for Rare Isotope Beams. The scientific objectives of the FRAB are to do science with rare isotopes. These experiments that we can do with rare isotopes allow us to understand the nature of the atomic nucleus, to understand where the elements in the universe come from, to understand uh, features of the fundamental interactions. The FRAB will be the highest power facility in the world. We accelerate the rare isotopes with a linear to half the speed of light. They impinge on a production target with 400 kilowatt beam power. There we smash the atoms, make new make rare isotopes that we can then deliver to, 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 to experimenters for science. There is the thermoelectric center that Professor Morali has developed. There they're looking for materials that have a low thermal conductivity, high electrical conductivity, and high thermoelectric power. The Energy Frontier Research Center is really focused on uh, energy utilization, how we use the energy resources that we have. If you look at how energy flows through the U.S. economy, it's very surprising to learn that almost two-thirds of it is lost in the form of waste heat. That's a prodigious amount of energy that we're not using. With the materials that we are studying, thermoelectrics, we can directly convert that heat to electricity. A strong part of our work is using computational techniques to design new materials, synthesizing them, and characterizing them in the laboratory. Materials really play a central role in any solar energy conversion system. And so we study uh, nanostructured semiconductor systems and understand water oxidation at those electrode surfaces. We've made a few major developments, I think, in understanding the fundamental bottlenecks which prevent efficient solar energy conversion with iron oxide electrodes. One of them is the actual water oxidation efficiency on the electrode surface. So we've identified a surface species which water oxidation occurs from, and what we're working on now is trying to identify the chemical nature of that, that species. We've really made a lot of advancements in understanding the mechanism of, of water oxidation. The Department of Chemistry of Michigan State University is, is really pursuing efforts to look at interdisciplinary science and try and leverage various uh, expertise across the campus to tackle complex problems. So an example of that would be work that we're doing actually in my group uh, through the program that NSF sponsored called NSF Solar. And that program really looks at taking chemists, material scientists, and even mathematicians to work together to tackle complex problems that no one department or no one research group could actually do on their own. At MSU, we have prided ourselves on emphasis on interdisciplinary areas uh, which are exciting and which, in which breakthroughs are possible. 
This is a big advantage for graduate students coming here because they can work in a variety of different areas. The lifeblood of research at any top tier institution is going to be the graduate students. The main focus here is we have students coming in as students and we try and train them so when they leave they're thinking like scientists. That process takes a long time and research in a lot of ways is a vehicle for that transformation in how the students are thinking about science. Michigan State University is really well positioned, I think, for making significant advances both on the fundamental as well as applied side of material science in the future. From the point of view of a faculty member as well as a graduate student, it's a really exciting time to be involved in materials-related research at Michigan State.